In this video, we're going to look at pausing a video automatically when a user switches tabs, uh, minimizes their browser or opens a new tab. Now you might not always want to do this. It's not uh, a, a recommendation that you should pause a video, but it's good to use new technologies uh, to actually go ahead and see how these things are done in case there is some kind of good uh, use case for them. So this is how it works. I've got a video here, it's currently paused. There's no autoplay attribute on our HTML5 video. Uh, when I click play, that video obviously goes ahead and plays. And I have another tab open here. When I go ahead and click on this, you'll notice the first thing, uh, the title here has changed. So it's got paused afterwards. Now obviously when we return back, the video has in fact paused at the particular point that we paused it. And then we can just go ahead and play it again. So let's go and have a look at how we can build this. We're gonna write some very basic code just to demonstrate the concept. Uh, but by the end of this video, you'll be able to implement this into your project. So here we are over in our text editor. There isn't much going on here at the moment, just a basic document laid out for us. Uh, we're gonna be writing some styles, very basic style just to control the video. Uh, width and then we'll write the JavaScript to the bottom of this page. Uh, obviously, as with any JavaScript you write, probably best in a separate file. So let's go ahead and uh, implement our video first of all. We'll take that as the first step. So we're going to have a video here, which is a uh, an HTML5 video element. So let's open and close that. We're going to give this an ID of video. We're going to have controls on here, and if you do want this to be autoplay, you can just use the autoplay attribute. Uh, but I'm going to leave that out just for now. Now inside of here, we need to define our video source. I have one in this video folder called cat.mp4. We go ahead and grab uh, an mp4 video. I'm just going to be looking at mp4 videos, not other types that work with different browsers. So uh, don't expect this to, to work in all browsers. So let's go ahead and define the source for this and also the type. And let's just end that. So the source then is just where it's located. So it's video cats.mp4 and the type is going to be video slash mp4 and that should give us our video. So let's just refresh and you can see we have a rather large video but it is now loaded in and we can work with it. So again, I'm gonna be writing just the styles up here at the top. Make sure these are in a separate style sheet. I'm just doing this literally to save time. So let's create some style tags up here. And obviously this is temporary but we're just gonna target the video element and we're gonna give that a width of 50%. So now we have a reduced video, so we can work with that a little bit better. And now we're gonna move on to the JavaScript. Again, this would be placed in a separate file, but we'll just include this down here just to save a little bit of time, save us having to create files. Um, so the first thing we want to do is uh, define where this video is. So I'm gonna create a variable called video and I'm gonna say document.getElementById Remember we gave that video an ID of video. We're just gonna uh, put that in there. And uh, we now have control over our video via this variable. So what we're also going to do is pull in the document title because we want to change this eventually. Remember we saw the uh, paused text in the brackets. So let's go ahead and define this as well. And again, this is a very rough example. Uh, this would be much better without sort of global variables or anything like that. So go ahead and put this into your project how it makes sense under some kind of global namespace. So let's take a look at the uh, HTML5 events for video. Uh, so we have on pause and on play, which we're going to be using. And we also have pause and play methods, which allow, allow us to actually play and pause the video. And we need to be able to control this. So we're going to say video dot on pause and uh, we assign a function to this, which allows us when the video is paused to take a particular action. So let's just go ahead and console log paused and we pretty much do exactly the same here on play. It's fairly straightforward. And inside of here, let's do a console log played. Now these are going to be used to update the titles only. So when we pause the video, we're gonna update the title to have that pause text, and we're gonna update the title uh, to nothing or just the original title uh, on play. Uh, these don't relate to the actual JavaScript visibility API. They just relate to changing the title, just a, a small feature we're implementing. So the main bit comes from the visibility change of the uh, browser. So let's go ahead and add an event listener. And let's go and listen for visibility change. 
So we can now do something within this uh, closure here when the uh, visibility changes. That means the user uh, minimizes their browser, switches to another tab, opens another tab, etc. So let's just do a console log here. Visibility changed. And we could even uh, check the visibility state. So let's say two, and then let's just append on document dot visibility state. And that's with a lowercase v. And this will just be either hidden or visible. So let's just check this out. Let's bring up our console so we can uh, check what's going on here. So over to the console and let's go ahead and play the video. We see we get played and then when I paused it just almost immediately we see paused. Let's go over to this other tab and then switch back and you can see visibility changed to hidden which is when we originally switched to the tab and then visibility changed to visible when we came back again. So we now know that we've got everything we need to make this work. We just need to implement the functionality mainly within this event listener here to make this work. So let's go ahead and store that state so we can detect, uh, well, use that variable a little bit easier. So it's visibility state. And what we're going to do is if the video isn't already paused, we don't want to do this if the user has already paused the video um, because we don't need to re-pause it. Um, and now we need two if statements, one for if the state is hidden. So remember, we're storing the state here. So let's just check if the state is hidden. Now, if the state is hidden, we want to go ahead and pause the video. That basically means pause the video when the user navigates away from our uh, current tab or current um, page. And uh, that's pretty much it. What we also want to do is update the title, which we'll look at in just a moment. So that's pretty much it. We, we don't need to do much else in here. If the state's hidden, we want to pause the video. I have used two if statements here and nested them, but obviously you can Go ahead and implement this within this uh, check as well. You might want to do something else in here as well, though. Uh, so that would make that a little bit cleaner. So now let's check that this actually works. So let's give the page a refresh and play. And then let's come over to this tab and then back again. And we can see that the video has been paused and we get them play and paused that we added in before. So now that's working. We can go ahead and just update the title. So obviously this isn't uh, entirely necessary. But it does obviously give the user some kind of indication that the video has been paused, that they've switched over. It's just to let them know, basically. So up here, we're going to create a function. So this is going to be update title for video. That's going to be a function. And we're going to take in the state here. So what we're going to do here is check if the state is nothing. We want the title to return back to its original um, original title basically. So we just set that to document title and then we return from that function. Now otherwise, and this is the part where we actually update the title to include that state. And the reason we're using state here is because we can uh, pass in anything we want into the update title for video. If you want to say uh, that it's paused or it's doing something else, you can. So otherwise, we're going to say document.title equals document title, which remember is the original title. And then in, in a string, we're going to uh, create some brackets. And then in here, we can just append in that state. So it gives you the flexibility to pass in anything you want. So now we can go ahead and use this update title for video. So update title for video, and let's pass in paused. So now if the video isn't already paused and the user moves away from the page, uh, we can go ahead and uh, pause the video and update the title to have paused at the end of it. So let's go ahead and check this out. Let's play this, move away, and you can see that we get paused. We might want to go ahead and just add a space in there. So if we play that and move away, we get paused. When we return back, obviously, when we play the video, this uh, title remains because we're not doing anything in the uh, on pause and on play event handlers to actually remove this. So let's go ahead and say when the user pauses the video, we're going to go ahead and do the same as if the user was to switch away from another tab, which just uh, adds a little bit of consistency there. And then when they play it, we're going to update the title for video. Remember, we include this check to see if state equals uh, an empty string. And then we just return the document to its original title. 
So in here, we'll just add an empty string. It doesn't have to be an empty string. It can be a null or, or something else. So let's uh, refresh for a final time. Let's play this. Let's go ahead and pause this. We can see that that updates to paused. We can play it again and that removes. We can switch over to another tab and we see paused. When we come back, we could obviously have the video auto play again if we wanted to, but in this case, we're just leaving it paused to let the user play it when they want to. And then when we play again, that goes. So that's how we update a video to pause and, uh, and resume if we switch tabs. Pretty straightforward and using the page visibility API, this might add some kind of value to your uh, project if you needed it.